Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. On today's show, with another loss in the books, is it officially panic time for the Cleveland Cavaliers? Plus, why the Cowboys could make a major statement against the Chiefs on Sunday. And will the Panthers regret trading away Cam Newton's favorite receiver? Skip, Shannon, let's get to it. A day after having a, quote, aired out team meeting, the Cavs dropped their fourth straight last night. The latest loss was a blowout at home to the Pacers. LeBron had 33 points and 11 assists, but he tied a season high with eight turnovers. The Cavs are currently next to last in the NBA in defensive efficiency. Let's take a listen to Ty Lue and LeBron on the team's struggles. Uh, we can't sustain effort for 48 minutes. Mm-hmm. Stupid question, how do you solve that? Huh? How do you solve that? I don't know. No, they're getting better shape. Um, be more mindful of what's going on. A lot of things you could do. The other games, we just got our butts kicked. You know, tonight I thought we did some good things. I thought we, you know, we just couldn't sustain it. You know, but the the other games, we just flat out got our butts kicked. So, um, seeing improvement, we just got to keep plugging, keep working. Coaches, players, everybody, just continue to try to keep getting better. Shannon, are you more concerned today about the Cavs' struggles? I was concerned um, from what I've seen over the first seven games, and I'm I'm still concerned. I'm equally as concerned. Um, they did nothing last night to put my mind at ease. I didn't see what Ty Lu saw. Mm-hmm. I need LeBron, uh, LeBron to get out the bakery business. Too many turnovers, Skip. Too many. He had half of the turnovers. They had 16. He had eight. That's he had, far too. He had five at halftime. Yeah, that's that, way too. That's many. far too many. And if you look at if you look at the game, you're like LeBron had 33, 11, uh, and eight. Uh, no, 33, 11, and six. I thought he was going for the triple dub yeah. with the with the turnover. <laughs> Stop it! Skip. Well, I thought so. I thought he was trying. He wasn't know, trying. Because it would be impressive. Thirty-three. 11, I know you though. Yeah. I know you though. That gloating. Well, one of us at this table actually stayed home so we could watch both games. At well, the same time. I'm a- just. After it was five to two, Joe and I was watching the game uh-huh. in the stadium. I have, I have NBA. Yes, you have NBA. Yeah. So we was watching it, and I let Joe cut that off. <laughs> cut that. That's, I let Joe cut. It. I don't want to watch anymore. Skip. <laughs> The Pacers are 26 in three points, three points made. They're 30 teams. They made 16. <laughs> they did. Skip, if you allow a team to shoot 61, 62 percent mm-hmm. from the three-point line, yep. and they make double digits, you're not beating them. I talked about this yesterday. They played the uh, the Pelicans, and they had four guys with 24 or more points. Mm-hmm. Yesterday, four starters with 15 or more points. Well, uh, three with 20 three with 20. Plus. Yeah. Collison, 9 of 10. Victor Oladipo, 5 of 7 for 3. Uh, 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 Fad Young, 12 of 18 mm-hmm. from the field. Bogdanovich, yep. you're not winning like that. And I, and I remind you, obviously, there's no more Paul George there. And Miles Turner, who's maybe their best player, is hurt right now, just for the record. Yeah, well, I wish he'd have showed yeah. up. Yeah. I, <laughs> Skip, I'm deeply concerned. And I told you about this curse. And I, I don't believe, and I'm you know, I, I don't believe in curses, but that old that old KK curse is for real, Joy. It's for real. And people need to wake up. Kardashian curse. Oh, the Kardashian curse. It, okay, look, tell me what happened to Tristan Thompson. He <laughs> pulled a calf muscle in the mid-second Iron quarter, Man. He's gone. Iron Man. He never misses a game. Nope. And Broke he's, he's eye socket and yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But all of a sudden, now he missing game. And you think that's a coincidence? He needs more time with Boo. Ooh. Ooh. Is right. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Look, Ty Lue going to have to juggle some lineups again. I don't know why Jeff Green is not playing more than he is. I don't know if you can play him 30 minutes, Skip, but he's too valuable. He's giving you 20 minutes and he's giving you 12, 13, 15 points a night. JR, for whatever reason, JR's in a funk. Mm. Now, I get it, JR. You were a little upset that you weren't starting. Yep. But you've been starting for the last three or four games. You got to play better. Yep. Kevin Love, you got to shoot you, you got to shoot a better percentage, bro. You know, I watched the whole game, and I, I forgot JR played last night. Yeah. Just for the uh, you know, D-Rose, D-Rose giving you D-Rose stuff. I mean, what happened to Jay Crowder, Skip? You told me he was good. I didn't tell you he was good. He's Mine was 24. Well, allegedly, he plays defense, but he hadn't been playing. I can't quick. tell. I think he left it back in Boston because they're the number one defensive team in basketball. Oh, uh, he left. Uh, he left everything. His game back in Boston. Yeah. He, like, every, man, woo, Lord, hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm just looking at this, Skip. Mm-hmm. The only person that had a plus last night for for the Cavs was Jeff Green. Hmm. Played 20 minutes. Jr. Playing 33 minutes and two or six six points. What am I supposed to do with that, Skip? Mm. Guy making $13, 14000000 a year, playing that many minutes, and he only giving me six points? 
what you am I? should worry. That's I, what you should do. I, I was I was concerned mm -hmm. from day one because I'm watching and there's some things that was concerning me, and because I didn't like the lineup the way it was constructed. They still think they're a three point shooting team, but they don't have three guys that can that can make a, a high percent mm -hmm. of three point shots. Yep. LeBron got to cut down cut down on the turnovers, and please stop talking about getting in shape. Please. In shape. Please. This is unacceptable. Mm. I appreciate your objectivity. Before I launch into what I'm going to say about your team, I want to show you one moment fairly late in this game. It's 7.08 left in the fourth quarter when it's still a game. The score is 97 to 91, and LeBron did what LeBron can do the way nobody can do in this league still at his advanced age, 15th year. Can we see LeBron attack and get his and one? He attacks. Unfortunately, he got fouled by little Corey Joseph. And then LeBron walks down the baseline and flexes for, for the crowd. That's Corey Joseph who just fouled you. He's 6'2". He's listed 6'3", but he, I, I know him from the Spurs. He's 6'2", and he's slight. So I don't know if it deserves a flex, but once upon a time, that would have worked because that would have just blown the roof off that crowd. Mm -hmm. So I don't have any problem with it if then you can then back it up. And LeBron did go to the free throw line, and he made the free throw. So all of a sudden, it's 97 to 94. 708 left in the game. Correct. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you feel like at that yes. point, this yes. is it? Yes. LeBron's just going to take this game over the way he has time after time after time, and they're going to win it by six or eight or ten points. And what happened from that moment on? They got outscored down the stretch 27 to 13 on their home court. 27 to 13, and that, that's a 14-point swing right there. And they lose 124 to 107 at home as a double-digit favorite at home. 124 to the Pacers. Wow. That's not Golden and, State, and, not Houston. And by the way, if you look at the score by quarters, this is highly unusual. The Pacers score 30 in the first quarter, 32 in the second, then 30 in the third, and 32 in the fourth. Well, it's rare that you just keep going 30, 30, 30. 30, 30. You're correct. And, correct. And it's right on schedule. 30, 32 in the first half, then 30, 32. So you give up 32 points in the fourth quarter on your floor, you're probably going to lose. Yeah. It's way too many points because they, they can't back up this on the defensive end. Correct. This this still works. Yes. Trust me. I mean, they, they couldn't keep LeBron from the rim in the fourth quarter. What do you have, like 14 in the fourth quarter? Mm -hmm. So he was doing his thing in the fourth quarter right. on one end of the floor. I'm going to say it again. At his advancing age, he doesn't commit to the defensive end the way he used to be able to. You made the point yesterday, the back injury a couple of years mm -hmm. back, he can't get in the chair position the way he used to. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't ignite the defense. He doesn't spearhead it. You know, mm -hmm. like he, he used to be the driving force on both ends of the floor, and he's not that guy anymore. Right. And th they're all half-hearted, and they're kind of looking at each other. And it reminds me a little bit of the Patriots in the first four games this year where you just look lost on defense. Shooters are just running loose, and you're, you're not running out to, to challenge. Run them off the line. line. You have to run them off the line. You have to get in their face. Nobody's running anybody off anything. The Pacers were getting whatever they wanted on offense from the three-point line or Sabonis, so, who's actually playing big the way he didn't used to. In looked Oklahoma like State. his dad last night. He looked night. like his dad. He was dominating the paint last night. So it's on the defensive end that is the first problem and is going to be the foremost problem. And I'm going to say it again. They wound up 22nd in defensive efficiency last regular season. Didn't hurt them in the playoffs until they got to Golden State. Mm -hmm. You say, well, Golden State added that big seven-foot monster. I got that. But still, now they have fallen to the worst in the East in defensive efficiency and only one notch ahead of Dallas in the NBA. Well, that's, that's not acceptable. You're not, not going to win that way. I mean, when, maybe you can skate through the East. Maybe you can. Skate no, they ain't through. skating through nothing. I don't know. Their first round, I mean, that's, it'll be, I, I would hate for LeBron to be in year 15 and go out in the first round. Yeah. But currently, I don't, see, I don't see them beating anybody. They're not better than anybody that's beat them right now. Yep. Because they can't defend. They allowed uh, uh, the Pacers starter to shoot 13 of 18 from three-point line. If you let somebody shoot 13 of 18, you let a starting unit shoot mm -hmm. 13, you losing. I mean, Oladipo and Collison are just getting what they want. Here, I got this one. You got that one? Hey, where, was, hold up, where was this Oladipo? You know what? Re Russell Westbrook threw a chair through the uh, TV. He's like, where were you last year doing this? You did none of this last year or we would still been here. I know, but Oladipo actually gets to shoot in Indiana. 
He got to shoot there, too. He was throwing up bricks in Houston. You mean in Oklahoma City? No, he was in Oklahoma City, but he was oh, throwing in Houston. Houston. Oh, in the he was Houston throwing City. up I bricks. Got I got you. And now, all of a sudden, he want to play. He want to play. Well, I guess he's back, you know, he's back home, Skip. You mm. know, he's Indiana, went I to the Indi- University of uh, IU. Yeah. So, I, I, I guess, you know, fans wreck. Man, man LeBron, LeBron with these turnovers, mm-hmm. I, that's something he can control. He can take better care of the ball. But this effort on the defensive end, mm-hmm. Skip, Okay. So obviously they acquired one piece from Boston who is at the moment not available. Isaiah Thomas. He don't play defense. He plays no defense. I was just gonna say <laughs> he is a defensive liability. What is he six feet tall, five no, eleven, he, whatever not he six is? Feet. I don't know what five he, ten, five, maybe. Ten, whatever he is. That's the problem with Isaiah is he can't cover that guy on the other end. Maybe he can take advantage of who's right. trying to guard him on the offensive end. And the other problem with Isaiah is that I still want to see the chemistry work if he comes back in January or whenever. Mm -hmm. I want to see if a ball-dominating shoot-first point guard can click with LeBron, who's currently playing point guard, and then would have to move to the two or the three. Really? I I want you to tell me about your boy, uh, uh, D-Wade. Now, you told me that he's going to come there and, you know, he's going to teach LeBron. You know, he's LeBron common for Can you tell me what he's been doing? He has been the driving force of the second unit because he took the demotion. He asked for the demotion from first string to second string so that he can lead the shock troops when they come in. And he has actually had some impact. He's been shocking his own team Mm -hmm. because when he come in, they've been down further than when he got in. Skip, you need to stop playing. Joy. Maybe they need to put him back in the starting line. Don't do that, Skip. We wanted him to come back to Miami. Don't look at me. See, sometimes the best deals you make are the ones you don't make. Mm. They should have just let him go head on. Wait, you, you're saying you don't you're like out on D-Wade? Wade already? Bad, Skip, they bad, Skip, they got but, me. But this is when and why you do need D-Wade, because now he can put an arm around Braun last night and say, it's going to be OK. I need him to put an arm around the basketball <laughs> and put it in the hoop. Can or, he do or, that? Or put an arm around the guy he's guarding, Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, he need to do more. Yeah. Skip, they can't guard anybody. No. I'm looking at the, Joy and I was watching. I, I skipped my head, too. I said, Joy, turn it off. You are like you. I don't want to watch it anymore. I mean, Thad Young pulling up from 26, Ola Depot pulling up from 25. I'm like, uh, uh, Sabonis. I'm like, that's his dad. That's the way his dad played. Get in the lane, dish off, drive to the basket. I'm like, again, Russ, like, where were you last year? And remember, Orlando did this, the Knicks did this, and now the Pacers. The Nets the did this. The, the, oh. the Pelican. Whew. I, please, I. I I, I don't want to know what the good things that, that, that Ty Lue saw. Yeah. Because I, I, I'm looking, I don't, I don't see nothing, nothing good about this. You're going to get a call from Braun after the show. Braun and I talk. Huh? He know, he know he's I like, think you just set the bridge on fire. No, no, no. Yes, me, and Braun, me and Braun are always going to be good. He, he's going to give you a call and say, you out on me? No, I ain't out on you. Mm. But you got to cut them turnovers down. You know, I'm, clo- mm. I'm closing. I'm, hey. Whew. He can't, we're not sponsoring any more of those, bake, those, those turnovers. <laughs> so we closing up shop. Well, now, our, our faithful viewers will realize this was the most objective LeShannon on LeBron moment in the history of this I've show. I've always been. And you ain't saying nothing about he's shooting 80%? From? The free throw line. You, I'll give you the bat again. We already got the bat. You, I thought you No, I told Chris. No, I told you uh, uh, when Chris Broussard was here. Like, yeah, we got the bat, 80. He going to shoot 80. You took the bat? I yes. thought you didn't take no. the bat. No. Did you do it off camera? No, I got all the confidence in the world in Bron. Really? 80% yes. from the free throw line? A- what? For the, you have to say, for the season. Four. Not for the month, right? For okay. the entire season. Okay. 80. 80. Got it. 80%. Thank you. And. Ah, the breakfast. And didn't I tell you he's going he to average a double double in points and assists? Well, that's easy. Well, the good news is that he's still feeding the excuse machine, saying our, our team is kind of depleted. Mm. So, so. Joy, don't do that. He ain't feeding oh, no God. machine. You have to keep it well oiled, or at the end of the end of the year, it doesn't work. I mean, look, they hadn't got a whole lot of practice time. They'll flip it around, Skip. No mercy. This is Shannon Sharp, and before the show moves along, a quick word about Home Depot and Husky Tools. They say in life there are no guarantees. Well, I'm here to tell you there just might be one exception. In 1924, Husky started making things for people who make things, and they did it with common sense. That meant adding function never frills, and making tools that stood the test of time. 93 years later, Husky is still making quality crafted durable tools, and Husky stands by their hand tools for life, so they gave their hand tools a lifetime warranty. Like the Husky Ratchet, with a 100 position ratcheting design and a 10% longer handle than standard ratchets, 
or the virtually unbreakable Husky flashlight with the ability to withstand a 30-foot drop, both guaranteed for a lifetime, built so you won't need it. Now that's a pretty sure thing, and to Husky, that's common sense. Husky, common sense tools since 1924, with hand tools guaranteed for a lifetime, found only at the Home Depot. No mercy. Our next guest spent 13 seasons in the NBA and had nearly 4,000 career assists. He's also the former head coach of the Phoenix Suns. Earl Watson, welcome to Nesquita. Thanks for having me. Good to have you. So Earl, what's going on with the Cavs? It's, I, think, I think it's a couple of things. I think being a minus 6.9 in points per game, you have the post Kyrie. And what I mean by that is the Cavs are making three less three-pointers this season than they were last season. So if you flip it, it's exactly the same what it is now. Mm. And during a season, you can get paralysis from analysis, mm. right? You can overstudy, you can think too hard, and they've had long post seasons. So they have to really get back into like, you know, defining and mastering the simple things, not being overanalyzing, but getting back to just being better focused p possession by possession, and it starts in practice. Mm. So you, you think they miss Kyrie's scoring? I think they miss the way he can take over yeah, a game offensively. Because right. mm -hmm. if you look at that roster, who can really do that the way he did it next to LeBron? Mm -hmm. right. It's different. D-Wade can do it as stretches, but it's to the rim. It's not at the three-point line. True. So it, it, it condenses the, the defense. They stay in the paint. They make you play on a perimeter. And then K-Love plays off of everyone. And LeBron had the space to, to operate, get in the paint, get to the rim, kick out, because everyone's afraid of Kyrie from the weak side defense. Mm. And what do you think about the Cavs' lack of defense? I just think sometimes, you know, it starts to hammer on you in the season. You know, these guys' expect, expectations are so high and the season can wear on you, and then you just start to break apart. And that's why I think it's a lack of focus. Like, get back in, get focused. Understand it's a long season. Build slowly. And just like the you know previous Lakers with Phil Jackson, they started out slow because their postseason was so long. Yeah. When you look at this team, but this team is different. They're, tried, they're getting up the same amount of threes, but they're not a three-point shooting team. I mean, you got Tristan. Well, Tristan's always been in the lineup. JR, for whatever reason, can't score. They had Jay Crowder. He's not shooting the three as well as he once did. They're shooting the same amount of three, but they're not, they don't, they don't, they're not a three-point shooting team currently. Yeah, they're not. And I, it goes back to the Kyrie, you know, post-Kyrie Irving. Um, when Kyrie had the ball, J.R. Smith is a great catch-and-shoot player. Right. So he needs someone to create to catch and shoot. Jay Crowder was the same thing. You had Isaiah Thomas who could create a lot, and he'll find his players, and Isaiah could take over games. So offensively, who is that guy for them that can take over games and stretches when teams collapse on LeBron? Hmm. What about D. Rose? I mean, he play, I mean he, he's played well, but he's a, basically a pick-and-roll point guard. He's not a guy that, that drives and looks to kick. He's looking to drive to get to the rim. I think he plays well, but D, D. Rose plays well at the rim. Right. LeBron James plays well at the rim. Kyrie can play well at the rim or beyond the three. Mm. Right. You missing him? Skip, yeah, you know. I, I want to know. Are of, you missing him? Of course we miss 25 points a night. Yeah. But you know Boogie Cousins are, is averaging more assists per game than Kyrie, right? Mm. <laughs> You know, he wanted to be more of a point guard. He wanted to show he can facilitate. You know, Boston I, is at the top of the I'm just, East, right? I'm just saying, Boogie Cousins, who's 6'10", mm -hmm. is averaging more assists per game mm -hmm. than a true point guard. And you can I, say you miss Unk. It's okay. You can say it. I'm the new Unk. And by the way, <laughs> you're the new Unk. Yeah. They, LeBron wishes you were the new Unk. And by the way, the Kyrie who couldn't play defense, the Celtics are number one in defensive efficiency, just for the record. Because they got them young guys over there. They got Tatum, they got Brown, they got, got yeah, Marcus Smart. Oh, so it's Kyrie. Now all of a sudden he a lockdown defender. Maybe it's getting contagious. He brought some defensive Stop, toughness. Earl. T huh? You see what I'm <laughs> <laughs> This is going back to this Cavs thing. It's not a bad thing. Um, in the NBA, you have to be ready to pivot. You have to be ready to transition. You have to be ready to pivot and create a new identity with your team. So the Cavs, I think, defensively, they have to put more of an emphasis on that, where previously it was always offensively. You have it to was. switch up the mindset because you need to get blocks, you need to get steals, you need to get stops in order to get out in transition, which we all know LeBron is the best in the league. But mm. they don't have defenders. Kevin Love is not a defender. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I thought that by putting JR back in the lineup and with Jay Crowder, we're having LeBron, Jay Crowder, and, uh, and JR... I said, well, that's their best defensive team. Okay, then they put Tristan Thompson back and took Jay, uh, and, and Crowder out. I was like, well, Tristan can protect the rim. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a rebounder. But when you look at them, 
Kyle Corbin don't play any defense. Channing Fry don't play defense. None of the guys really play defense. LeBron is a roamer. He's not that guy that's going to sit in the chair and guard you all over the court. That's not what he is now. He, he once was. Yeah, capable. but but 15 years, that was yeah, six, seven mm -hmm. years ago. He's capable. He showed that in Miami. I've yeah. seen LeBron once play the, the five position, the center he, position. He, he would. And guard Al Jefferson when I was with Utah and just right. lock him down. Right. It's amazing how quick he can move. And, you know, you notice in every sport you have, you have nasty, a guy who brings an edge, right. and then you have toughness. Right. So the guys you mentioned, JR can be a nasty defender right. if he can. chooses to be. Right. If Kyle chooses, Corver has to be tough. Right. Mm. Has to sometimes be the Danny Ainge and start a fight, start a scuffle, mm -hmm. start something to mix up and, and gain emotion to I'm strike. I'm not sure he's got that in him. He, you have to have it. Mm. You, yeah, Skip, you, you got to have it. Sometimes, I mean, if something go down, Skip, I need you to mm. swing on somebody. Oh, my goodness. Joy, you see what I'm talking about, Joy? Mm. Joe, I show who you got on sneaker, because mm. Skip don't bail on us. Mm. I, <laughs> I, I how about this? Not just, bail on how about no, just, Skip's not bailing. Just make sure the car ready. Just have the car cranked up, because I'm going to swing it well, up in the car. Well, at least we know who's going to start it, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you we do. So, I am seeing not a blip. I'm seeing a trend. <laughs> okay. I told you this last year. They wound up at the end of the regular season last year, 22nd in NBA defensive efficiency. So, it was starting to show itself because you cannot expect LeBron in his 15th year to ignite the defense the way he once did. Because once upon a time, he, j he could take over on defense, and it would be contagious, and they would follow LeBron on the defensive end. He could set the tone. And he doesn't set it anymore because he still can set it on the offensive end. But in, in general, now, I thought Jay Crowder could defend, but I'm not seeing a contagious effect on him. He, he doesn't seem to be coming along for the ride, like, like that's the mindset of the Cavaliers. The Cavaliers want to three you out of the gym yeah. the way they did last year, and they're not making them this year the right. way they were. Le LeBron can still get to the rim. He was getting to the rim in the fourth quarter last night. Mm -hmm. He scored 14 in the fourth quarter, and they got blown off the floor because – and, and again, you can say the Pacers just had a hot-handed night, but they're just getting whatever they want, both from the three-point line and an interior. Sabonis is getting whatever he wants inside. Every, everything you just said is the way the NBA is trending. The game has changed over the summer just that quickly. Mm -hmm. Every team is trying to get to the rim, get corner threes, and get out in transition. Mm -hmm. The three, the, the mid-range is a lost art, art, and no one wants to play in that game anymore. So the game has changed mm -hmm. while the Cavaliers went backwards in three-point shooting. But I think I'm, I'm Cavs coaching bias, man. I grew up with Tyron Lue. Did. Their defensive coach, Longo, is one of the best in the NBA. Um, Larry Drew, who's also from Kansas That's City, true. is a great yeah. coach. Mm -hmm. They're going to continue to reinvent until they find it, and they have to continue to do it, and they will, so I'm sure they will turn it. Mm. I don't know. I'm seeing some issues. Skip, here. Golden State 4-3. Oh. and three. You ain't saying nothing about them. They lost three games. One year, they didn't lose four games to the All-Star break. When they decide to crank it up on the defensive end, they can crank well, it. I'm better. not sure Cleveland is capable of cranking it. Is LeBron still in Cleveland? You see he got that tie around his neck? Is, That's LeBron, a is LeBron still in his 15th season? And still giving folks did, did, 25, 10, did, and did, 6. Did he lead the league in minutes played last year? And did might he? lead it again this year. And go, will you tell him how good? See, he don't believe LeBron good. Can you tell him how good? good. I believe he's good. Well, no, what are you talking he's, about? He's, he's, he's great. You can't he, say he's well, good. Mean, Who the best? Well, you, 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 good is the enemy of great. Uh, Earl, you know, how, about this, how about this, Earl? You played all them years in the NBA. You coached for a long time. Who's the best player in the NBA currently? LeBron is the best player. He works the hardest. His mindset. Okay. LeBron was playing pickup at UCLA mm -hmm. this summer. Mm -hmm. That tells you his mindset is shifting to I have to continue to be even better than last season. Yeah, he says he's not in shape. And he says his team is not in shape. But he said he had the best offseason ever. And just because of a little ankle injury in, in the <laughs> preseason. Well, that's Come on. Yeah. Did you he know, really miss that much time? Yeah, that's like the pilot gauges. It's just a little gauge. Oh, they won't take off. Ankle, that's his whole thing, Skip. Mm -hmm. His whole thing is freight training, folks. And so if you got a little nick... You can't be the best player on the planet if you don't play both ways. you got to play can. some defense. And I, Last night, I'm watching closely. He just doesn't... His, he does. His heart is not in the defense. He got a block Maybe shot. Maybe he's pacing himself. Averaging 1.8 blocks and two steals a game. Mm. He's talking about he ain't playing no mm. deep. I think, right. I think you just motivated him. Mm. Just be honest, you just motivated him, so he appreciates it. Skip, you know what that means. Yeah. About to go 30, 10, and, and 8. Mm -hmm. Well, he almost had a triple dub last night with those Stop, eight turnovers. <laughs> well, he did. What was he, 33, 11, and 8? Eight turnovers? Six rebounds. I didn't even talk about the turnovers. Yes, you, you did. You brought it up. You brought it up in the first yeah, segment. Okay. You talk about you ain't talk about it. Will you not talk about a negative LeBron had? But he going to clean that up. Shot mm -hmm. 80%. You ain't mentioned that. Yeah.
from the well, free throw line. We got to bet on that. Early. How about? Yeah, yeah you, you're gonna lose that bet. You already lost that. That's over. It's no. game over. He is not gonna shoot 80. 80 percent from the free throw. I'll line. give you a chance right now to take it back. I, I ain't <laughs> taking nothing back. As a matter of fact, I'm doubling down. You want two, two cases? Two cases. Well, you lose two cases every time, so you don't even two, care anymore. Two, because I'm going to win two. It doesn't bother you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to have you just give me one. I'm going to send to LeBron. He's going to sign it so and send it back. I want to talk about the young man that LeBron sent <clears throat> birthday wishes to just a few days back, Lonzo Ball. And this man got an up-close look at Lonzo Ball in game number two this year in Phoenix on a Friday night, which you will remember. And Lonzo put up his best numbers of the season because he went for 29, 11, and 9. And the 9 were assists, not turnovers. So 29, 11, and 9. And Lonzo made three big buckets down the stretch, as you recall, where he just took it to the rack. One time he went right up through Tyson Chandler and made one. It was, it was very impressive with the left hand, like body-to-body yeah. -body contact. I first met Lonzo Ball and his parents and his family in the eighth grade when he was in the eighth grade. I've seen him play at AU basketball, I have an academy here in LA. I've seen him play, and I knew the kid was going to be special. I've seen him run the fast break in the eighth grade as if he was Jason Kidd, making on time, on target passes mm -hmm. with the right velocity. And that, that, that means a lot for it anyone catching any pass in any right. sport. Yep. He got a kid by the name of New Williams, 14 dunks in one game in transition. They played back to back. They went to the next court. He gets the kid, New Williams, 10 dunks. I try to get both of them for my travel team. I'm being honest with you. I try to get both. I was like, we need these two. And who is the kid who reminds me of Jason Kidd? Right. And seeing him grow up and see LeVar grow, grow him and mature him and coach him and hold him accountable, I knew what Lonzo was capable of. And I'm, of course, UCLA biased. Yeah. But I knew. The kid is beyond his years. He impacts the game in a way that's uncommon because his personality. He's never really swayed either way. He nope. he's always has a poker face and he plays the right way. He makes the, the extra pass, which becomes contagious. And you mix him with Kuzma, you have a team that can move the ball very quickly, and you have a young superstar in the waiting. He has not put up these numbers that he put up against your team. And you could say your team was a little, is it, were you a little troubled that night? I don't know. Was there any dissension or infighting or? <laughs> Smart, quick, right? Mm -hmm. Savvy. I'm a pivot. So <laughs> <laughs> our team, our team is young. Their team is was yep. was is young. I, 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 you know, hey. my comment after the game is the future has no defense because the score was very high, it and that's was. the game you're seeing. I think yep. you're seeing a trend come back into the NBA where it's going to be high scoring games. That was from one. Now that was 132 to 130 that yes. night. So Absolutely. defense, you could argue, was optional, but he was special. And that I, I think Le I think I think Lavar is a genius. <clears throat> because? Because of the way he impacts his kids, because of the things he set up and how he creates. I went to the UCLA game last night. I've, I've, I played at UCLA. Coach Wooden sitting behind the bench. Magic Johnson, Jerry West come into the game. Shaq and Kobe when they were with the, with the Lakers. I've never seen the student section line up to take anyone's picture except for Coach Wooden after the game. Mm -hmm. At halftime, it had to be 300 kids on their phone taking pictures trying to meet LeVar. And that right there tells me he has impact the future of sports. Whew. Now, you only see older generation criticizing him. Right. I've yet to see a young kid say they dislike him or they do not want a father like him. Right. Mm. Cause that's because old school, Skip, we grew up a certain way, the parents stayed in the background and that la da da. But now he's, he's this new age, they're building brands. Yeah. He realized that, hey, you're not. I'm gonna bring. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say things to get you to talk about me, and then you want to hear what I have to say next. Okay, but Lonzo at Staples has gone a little passive on occasion. You talk about poker face. He doesn't play with a lot of emotion. There's no Magic Johnson personality, right. charisma going on there. He just makes plays and passes that you, that are just have big wow factor. But it is. I'm. I'm as big a fan as you can get, but there have been times in those home games when it was time for him to take over and attack a little bit more as he did all night against you guys. And I don't know why, he just goes a little timid and passive. What, what's, what, what do you see? What The charisma is there. You see him in his rap concerts. He has the charisma. Yeah, right. So you know he has the personality. And, you know, I like to apologize. He's still young. So give him a chance to fill the season, fill the game, fill his teammates. It's not easy coming into a locker room telling any veteran player or any player as a rookie or as a young point guard, this is what you need to do. Playing for Hubie Brown in Memphis with Jerry West being our GM, Hubie Brown being our head coach. Mm -hmm. Hubie Brown would always say the two toughest positions in the NBA 
coming into this league is the center position because it's a man's game in the paint, yep. the physicality, yep. and the point guard position because you can play that the longest. You are going against guys and other opponents who have mastered that position vocally with the ball. In the, in the huddles, it's so many games within the game that he will continue to evolve. And plus, LeVar keeps calling out the next opponent. You know, you know, you know, you know what that is? That's when you grow up in the hood. I grew up in Kansas City, Kansas, mm -hmm. Wyandotte County, one of the poorest counties in the United mm -hmm. States. Mm -hmm. But great people, a lot of pride. You grow up in the hood and your dad take you to the playground. Mm -hmm. And it's the older guys playing. And he makes you get out of the car and play against those older guys. Right. And he tells them, cut him no slack. Mm. Just don't beat him up. Right. Right? Cut him no slack. Yeah. Just don't beat him <laughs> up. So what LeVar is doing is preparing him for not just now, but the future. He's bringing out the best of everyone so Lonzo can get better. It's, it's everything strategic. Mm. Mm -hmm. See, that's why I always play with the boys. And that's what I do. Beat Skip up. I just don't <laughs> hurt him. <laughs> I don't hurt him. I just beat, bust him up every morning, Earl. I don't no. hurt him. But... Yeah. Because I have a lot to learn. <laughs> got a long ways to go. No mercy. The Cowboys host the Chiefs on Sunday and are expected to be without Ezekiel Elliott. Dallas will rely on Alfred Morris, Darren McFadden, and Rod Smith in Zeke's absence. Westgate has this game as a pick -em, even though the Chiefs are 6-2. and two. We're joined by Fox NFL analyst Mark Schlereth. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Good Thank morning. you. Thanks. It's good to be here. Are you surprised by the spread? No. No. I mean, the Chiefs, I, I understand the Chiefs have a, a really outstanding record. There's no question that they're a good football team, but they have fatal flaws just like a lot of other teams have fatal flaws. I mean, this is a team that's in the bottom of the rankings as far as defending the run is concerned. The Broncos had not one, not two, not th but, but three different backs rush for five yards plus a carry. You got five and a half yards uh, from C.J. Anderson in that game. You've got six yards per carry plus by Booker in that game. You've got five yards per carry by Jamal uh, by Charles. Jamal Charles in that game. Excuse me. I mean, you had I mean, you ran the ball effectively with a quarterback who um, a quarterback who was just throwing picks like it was his business, mm -hmm. you know, and throwing dirt balls. So you can't. I mean, you flat can't defend the run, and this has happened to them a bunch. Now you're going into Dallas with the best rushing or the second best rushing uh, rushing team in football. And, and I get in the potential of Zeke not playing and all that stuff, but I, I'm not as concerned as a lot of people. I know Zeke is a really talented guy, but I think you're going to see them open up. Or you go back to Alfred Morris and, and back to his days in Washington. What was he – what what kind of offense did he run that he was great in? And it was all the zone read wow. stuff with RG3 – and trust me, Dallas has that in their playbook. They, have, as a matter of fact, they run it very effectively down in the red zone all the time. It's one of the big weapons they have. I expect them to run a little bit more of that to get a little bit more production in the running game out of Dak Prescott. I think that's the way they'll go. But McFadden is going to be fresh as a daisy. That guy's been on the sideline for six weeks or seven I hope weeks. He's still around. I don't oh, he, know. But he might stumble on the way to the on the way to the stadium uh, and, and hurt something. You know, he, <laughs> well, they've they had him. They've had him wrapped in, in bubble wrap, bubble wrap okay. in, in an he's oxygen good. tent for he's like okay. six, seven weeks. So well, he, he good. Then. Yeah, he's going to be okay for at least a couple of weeks. But mm. I, like, I am not. I know a lot of people are very concerned. This this spread doesn't surprise me. I think that the Chiefs are a good football team. Do I think they're a great football team? No, they have a really good record. But I think they're very beatable, and I think the Broncos should have beat them on their home turf on Monday night had they gotten even a small Half bit of production out of a quarterback. Just a tad. Mm. I agree with you, Stink. I think Dallas, as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I'm picking Dallas to win this game. What? Yes. Yes. I'm sunk. Because, because <laughs> I've, I've been out on Kansas City for the, like, oh, especially their defense. Now, offensively, Skip, they still, that tight end will cause you problems. I'd say. Tyreek Hill will cause you problems. Sure. Now, they got to get back to getting Le uh, uh, Hunt, Kareem Hunt, more involved in the offense as far as running the football. Hey, wait, time out. Last year, you were driving their bandwagon, and they didn't have Kareem Hunt. Yeah. So, what changed? The defense. They can't stop anybody from running the football. Okay. They can't. They're Justin the Houston looked like he was himself rushing the passer. The I time. could get a sack against the Broncos O-line. Really? Yeah, oh. I could. Can't catch any passes because they ain't got nobody to throw it to me. But you, you, you might be able to play quarterback. <laughs> <in the> <laughs> and I agree with everything uh, Stink just said. Had they had gotten decent play. I'm not even talking about good play. I'm saying decent play. Skip. Five turnovers, a scoop and, sco a scoop and score, and they only gave up 29 points. He threw, I mean, the interceptions that he threw were not even close mm. to being completed. 
I mean, great. Now, he did have some drops. I don't know what Benny Fowler, Benny Fowler got an early start on that Halloween candy, passing out Butterfingers left and right Monday Ooh. night. But, Skip, the Broncos made the right move with the quarterback. But the, the, the uh, Kansas City defense, mm. if you still howled, did you see what Pittsburgh did? The Broncos went there and ran for 5.7 yards a carry mm-hmm. on 31 carries. I'm upset they didn't run the ball 50 times because mm-hmm. they should have ran it 50 times and allowed uh, 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 mm-hmm. what's the quarterback name? Did Trevor Simeon. Trevor Simeon. Yeah. <laughs> they should have allowed him. You know you He's already yeah, forgotten. Yeah. No, yeah. no I, don't even, I forgot his name. <laughs> He's been so bad. I'm trying to. I'm trying to forget he played quarterback. Mm. They should have read it 50 times and let Trevor throw it yeah. 20 times. Mm. But for some reason, they let him throw it 36, and they only got uh, uh, 31 runs. Mm-hmm. You average 5.7 yards a carry. <laughs> and on 31 attempts, now normally you see a big, like, okay, yeah. if they'd have ran it more, that would come down. 31 right. attempts, 5.7. When you're roll, when you're rolling like that, you just tell Shannon, you tell the receivers, you tell everybody else, hey, listen, man, ain't your game. This, is, this one's not your – we're just going to go ahead. And I already knew. I already, right. I already knew, Skip. You know what I did, Skip? I throw the towel away. It wasn't nothing about being cute or anything. Have my towel. Go ahead and throw it out. You know, bring me an elbow sleeve because guess what? I got to get grimy today. <laughs> Ain't about catching no pass. I can't be, you know, all posing for the camera. It's got me a tub. Mm. All right, TD, go ahead. What you got backside for me, Sharpie? Mm. Come on, see me. Yeah. Mm. That, and that's what you and that's what you've got to, that's what they have to do and and they have screwed this thing up the the coaches the Broncos have screwed this thing up from they, they've been out of balance in Buffalo they threw it 46 times against the Giants they threw it 50 times with Trevor I mean this has been a consistent theme you're not going to to me you won't get that out of the Cowboys the mm-hmm. Cowboys and Scott Linehan their offensive coordinator are I wouldn't be surprised to see that 50 carry mark mm-hmm. I wouldn't and by the way you've played college football with Scott Linehan, Scott Linehan at Idaho. Yes. Just for the record. So now back to the Dallas Cowboys. I always try to guess the point spread before I see the point spread. And I just guessed because I thought Vegas would have some respect for Kansas City. I thought with no Zeke, and I'm still, by the way, I'm still not sure he's not playing on Sunday. Sure. I'm just not sure. I don't know what's going on. They filed the appeal, but then I don't know what happens from this point. I'm, I'm lost. It's over my head. But I thought Kansas City would be a six-point favorite going to Dallas off what we saw on Monday night because as bad as Trevor Simeon was, they did some good things, and Travis Kelsey just took the game over, and he is the best tight end in football as we speak. Mm -hmm. He's a force to be reckoned with. He's to be dealt with. He he is – he can do some things. He Mm -hmm. can run the ball on their little shovel that they run (laughs) the middle, and he's going to be a handful for anybody, probably Byron Jones, trying to – to cover him, you can't even cover him. I don't know what you do. He he will get his on Sunday mm-hmm. because this defense is still trying to find itself. But minus six opened at Pickham. Then it got bet to minus one, and then it was bet back down to Pickham. So that's where it is right now. So guess what Vegas is saying? We don't care whether Zeke is playing or not because what I've been trying to tell you all along, the main player here, the MVP of this team, the one that you do not bet against – is the quarterback. Wow. See, there it is. That, that's what they're saying. It's all about Dak. They're saying, if you got Dak, you're good. Did they, they didn't watch, they didn't, I guess they didn't watch that game Monday night and watch Denver with those backs mm. in that offensive line. And Dallas has the best offensive line mm-hmm. in football. So they didn't, what, what part did well, that you, you told me that, that I'm overestimating what Alfred Morris can do or Darren McFadden. You said they're just guys they compared to what the bell cow can I'm, do. I'm pick, what you told me. I'm picking them because you're Kansas, picking them because you're nervous because you're afraid that Dak is going to put on a show and you're going to have to come in here and eat crow. Well, we'll 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 see. <laughs> we'll, we'll, see <laughs> we'll, we'll see when they have. That's to, what happened when they have to deal with Fletcher Cox yeah. and Brandon Graham. Yeah, then I, then, I, then, I then can't we, wait. Yeah, I can't either. Yeah, that's about a, what four weeks away. No, don't worry about it. Don't count the time. I'll make the time count. Oh, will you? yeah, your day coming. Who you I, betting on in that game? You already know mm-hmm. that when, he's a winner of a lifetime player. <laughs> yeah, really. MVP can. All I know, they had five MVPs on Undisputed website. Mm-hmm. I didn't see a guy number four. I did see a number four. It was Deshaun Watson. He from Texas, just Houston, Texas. But guess what you said? All of a sudden, Dallas's number four has a chance to make a statement starting Sunday yes. against a very good football team that is six and two, the Kansas City Chiefs. Do they have flaws? I thought they had flaws from the start. But they are six and two, and the quarterback is playing at the highest level he's ever played at. Is yes. that fair? Yeah, absolutely. What is he now? Is he fifteen to zero? Sixteen, 16 and zero. Yeah, sixteen, 16 to zero. Touchdowns. Sixteen touchdowns. 
I, I just think I think I'm a Dak Prescott fan. I think Dak Prescott's an outstanding young quarterback. And I think in this particular game, you look at this matchup, if you run the ball, you open up play action. Kansas City, they will jump. I mean, the fish hook right here. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, they'll get that fish hook and now. I agree with you. They will you jump. Say. That secondary is jumpy Dude. as they could. They, but now, listen. now, listen, they can make plays back yes. there. They can make plays, but they can get burnt as well. And if you just don't, again, you don't turn the ball over, you run the ball. In my mind, you beat Kansas City. Okay. Dak Prescott is six feet, two inches tall, and 240 pounds. And he can flat out run that zone read. Because you're right, he is lethal in the red zone. You're going to see him between the 20s with I'm, Alfred I'm 100% with you on that. I, I think thought, that's exactly I, where they're going. I, I thought the zone read was dead, though. Nobody run it. Oh. They run it. Nope. Oh, also, a little Never fun mind. note, this is going to be Tony Romo's first game calling the uh -huh. boys. He's going to be hating on Dak. Dak, so? he, Dak no. said hopefully, <laughs> hopefully he doesn't call out and guess too many of our plays because he still knows a lot of them. So, we'll see. No mercy. The Carolina Panthers made a surprising move before Tuesday's trade deadline, sending Kelvin Benjamin to the Bills for third and seventh round draft picks. Benjamin was Carolina's leading receiver with nearly 500 yards. A disappointed Cam Newton wrote on Instagram, quote, some things you will never understand, and spoke to the media about the trade. Let's take a listen. Pretty much found out when y'all found out. Um, but I don't want to dwell on that. I just, um, you know, obvious emotional connection, but uh, that can't be a distraction for our preparation this week. I don't think it changes much. You know, you can't replace a Benji. You know, just like you can't replace a Fun, you can't replace a Greg Olson, you can't replace anybody else that's on this team. You know, you just have to, you know, roll with the punches and, and, and make due to it. We're joined by FS1 NFL analyst Eric Dickerson. Welcome, Eric. Good morning. Hey, how you doing, bro? I'm good. I'm good. I, I, yeah, I wasn't. I lost my voice. I was at SMU defending. Defending he, Skip. He lost his voice. De defending, defending Skip. Defending Skip at SMU. You know, I had a football camp I was doing for kids, and I was doing a lot of yelling, so, yeah. so I lost my voice. <laughs> Shannon, why do you think the Panthers did this? I think they had concerns because they picked up his fifth-year option, uh, I think, in, in April or May. They picked up the option. So that tells me that they thought they could move forward with uh, Kelvin Benjamin. But here's a guy that at the age of 24, they, they, it was reports that his weight, weight got up to 280 pounds mm -hmm. as a wide receiver. This is what the one thing I know, E.D., and you know this also. A big young man normally becomes a big old man. <laughs> and you can't have that at the wide receiver position. Skip on out of 128 tight ends and wide receivers mm -hmm. graded on separation, Kelvin Benjamin is 126. Mm. And 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 uh, why Cam says you can't place a Kel uh, uh, Kelvin Benjamin, Cam's MVP season. Guess who had torn his ACL mm -hmm. in training camp? Kelvin ben Benjamin. Mm. Cam Newton greatest season as a quarterback, his MVP season. Mm -hmm. He did not have Kelvin Benjamin one snap during the yep. regular season. Yep. And I, I don't think that's a coincidence. Uh, I think Cam tries to force him the ball. He is a big body guy. He doesn't get a whole lot of separation, but he can go up over people and catch, you know, catch yeah. the ball. And yep. Cam feel conf feel very confident throwing him the football. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times when you force the ball, bad things happen because if he doesn't get it clean, it gets tipped, it gets picked off. And the Carolina just looked at it like, at 280, coming in at 280 at 24, what's he going to be at 25, at 26? 300? Mm, you know. <laughs> 300, receive wow. Why not just go? If we can get something for, for him, he's not in our long-term futures, uh, long future, although we thought he was because that's why we picked up the fifth-year option. Buffalo made it abundantly clear that Sammy Watkins wasn't in their long-term plan because they didn't pick up his option. They picked up Kelvin Benjamin's option. Skip, something has transpired between training camp and when this trade happened I agree. to make Carolina sour on him. Mm -hmm. It was reported that he walked off the field the other day out of practice. He said it was because it was injury-related. I don't know. But something has transpired over the last four months to, call the, to, to cause the Carolina Panthers to sour on Kevin Benjamin. Mm. Well, I don't, I don't think you'll ever know until you hear Kevin Benjamin talk about right. it. Right. And you're right. One thing is that when, you, when you're a big, big guy, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you get overweight, and that's what happened to him in his third year after he had that ACL injury. He came back and he was overweight. And he was kind of never the same guy. I right. mean, him and Fronts are the same kind of receivers. You know, they big, are. not fast. And in the NFL, speed kills. That's one yeah. thing. If you can catch the ball a little bit, they'll take that speed over yeah, a guy that's absolutely. big. And, and, you know, you can't, you, like you say, you can't get separation. And you have to be able to get separation. I mean, uh, Curtis Samuel, he runs a 4-3. Um, 
McCaffrey, he runs a 4-4, he ran a 4-4 mm. at the Combine. So, you know, you got you have to have those guys that can get open. The, the, we, call them, like we call them speed merchants. Right. The speed merchants. And, and you're a big, big target. And I really believe, you know, in some cases, we don't want the same two kind of guys. And right. that's what they are. I mean, me, I like the same two kind of shoes. I don't mind buying them. As you can see, I have no shoes on today. <laughs> but but, but I, I really believe that, that that's, that's where the problem came. That we got, we got two of the same guys, and let, let's let him go. Hmm. And before you go, Skip, and here's the thing. When you got a big body guy that doesn't get separation, the throws have to be perfect. And we know Cam struggles with his accuracy at times. So if he's off just a little bit, that's an incompletion, or I mean, incompletion, or it's an interception. Mm -hmm. So that might have had something. So it sounds like both of you think this was a good move by the Panthers to get rid of him, correct? Yeah. You know, I, 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 I'm going to say this much here. In, in, in the NFL, you know, Cam said it best. It's business, and that's, that's what it comes down to. Sometimes this is about business, and they, they'll look at the team and say, you know what, we're better with him, with him or without him. Well, right now, he's not bringing, like, like that wow effect, so mm -hmm. let's dump this, let's get rid of Sarah, just let him go. And I would say it's like a 50-50. Like, what you say? He went to, had, Cam had his best year without yeah, him. You're right. Without him. He so, did. Yeah. So before I say what I'm going to say, I do want to – commend Cam Newton because we've been critical of him mm -hmm. some of his media sessions before he handled this beautifully he was the face of the franchise because this by all that I read was maybe his best friend on the team right. it's hard man I mean yes when you get that torn away from you like you said his Instagram post some things you just what was it well you'll, you'll, you'll never, never understand, understand it Whew. okay but when he dealt with the media he dealt correctly because he said it's just, it, I learned it's a business, but we got to get ready right. to play the Atlanta Falcons because they do. I don't want to dwell coming. on it. Nope, he didn't want to dwell on it. So way to go, Cam. That showed some maturity to yes. me that I hadn't seen often this year. Now, back to this. I do think that they believed that Cam, because of his friendship, was looking too much to try to force the ball. Mm -hmm. And he was their leading receiver. And they have had their moments this year, and they have not had their moments. They had the two great road games at New England, at Detroit, and then, you know, they've had some other Especially minor home. disasters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where New Orleans just, just embarrassed them at mm -hmm. home. And then, obviously, Philadelphia beat them in that big stage Thursday night game. So, remember, the Buffalo GM used to work for the Panthers and had a hand in evaluating Kelvin Benjamin before the draft mm -hmm. and encouraged them to pick. So he's a fan, and so he thinks they can maximize what he does with what they do with Tyrod. Right. So good for them. It could be the trade that benefits both teams because I'm not writing him off. I know he gets too big, but listen, there are days when I watch him, yeah. he, he can be a monster, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he's different than Funchess. I know they're both big, right. big body receivers, but, but this guy can play really – he can play up to his yeah. size where, where he just dominates you. Funchess, Funchess is more technical. He, he's, he's a little he, more he, finesse. Yeah, yeah he, he's, he's more, he, can, he can run the tree. Yeah. Kevin Benjamin is just a big body, yeah. post you up guy in the paint, throw it up, I'm going to jump up does. over you and, and catch but, the ball. But mm -hmm. He's not that receiver all the time. And, right. And you need that out of your top receiver. Right. If you got 16 games, you want to at least try to get 12, out, 12, 12 of those. Mm -hmm. games like right. he's he's a factor and he's not that factor all yep. the time so to me Carolina's saying Cam we got to save you from yourself we, we got to take your security blanket away because he's not that big a security blanket and we got to get have room to split McCaffrey out more mm -hmm. or uh, Curtis Samuel who runs 4-3 right. right. or uh, that Kalen Clay right. they, they got little little speed guys that they don't get on the field enough. Mm -hmm. So I think it could benefit both teams because I think Kelvin Benjamin will have immediate impact for a Buffalo team starting to yeah, but, starting to come but around. Yeah, as a wide receiver, you can't. No, I got it. I don't even I don't even consider him a wide receiver. He's more a tight end. He's a tight end. A tight end. It was, like a tight end. Well well he needed to get down a few points then. <laughs> well you know you I, and, and you, you heard Cam say, you know, Benji, Benji. He called him and, Benji. and you he tell did. you can tell that's his boy. Yeah. You, yeah. You know, and you it said was. right. And sometimes you try to you try to get people out throwing passes like, man, I'm trying I'm trying to get it to you. Because guess what? He in contract you. Yeah. You know, I try to, you know, I'm trying to make, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get you paid, bro. Yeah, you, and mm -hmm. you're trying to it is you tough. Know. It's tough when your friends get released or they get traded. It's tough on you because you build a relationship, and that's what that's what NFL is about. And your look, your your friend Lee with all your teammates, but some of them you're closer with, Tight. you do things with, you talk on, converse with, you hang out with. And they had that type of relationship. So it is very tough for Cam. Yeah. But I love the way Cam handled this. It shows you he yeah. gets it. And when he wants to be mature yep. and he wants to be the face of a franchise, he knows how to do it. It's just sometimes like he likes <laughs>
whatever. <laughs> I mean, and this was a time he could have said something crazy. Yeah. yeah. He could, he could, he, you know what? This is more of a time than the other yeah, he, time. He could, he could right. Say crazy. I mean, like yep. when, I, when I got traded from the Rams, I mean, and it, and it hurts Kelvin Benjamin also. I mean, it hurts it. I mean, sure. because we have feelings. Players have feelings too. Because he's telling you, we don't want you no more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. I mean, when I got traded from the Rams, I won't forget, I saw some of my boys, you know, Leroy Irving and Jackie Slater, oh. but they, said, they didn't say anything bad, you know. We we love Eric here, but we've got to move on, and that's just the facts. You know, you got we got to move on to the next I'm guy, like, and we got a game to play. Y'all love, come on, y'all put a D on the end. I, mean, I said love. No, what I'm just saying, I'm just saying, but that's that, it does. It does. You know what happens when you get injured, and how to team? They don't treat you the same when you're injured. The coach oh, don't treat you. Oh, the you, same. you know, can, can 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 you go? I don't know, coach. Okay, all right then. Right. Mm. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they look at your side. Oh, yeah. he, yeah. Mm. oh, he, 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 so how bad you hurt? Were you driven when you got to Indy? Of course, I was. I mean, driven. were you going to show them? I, I did. I, I led you, the league. You I mean, showed I, them. I mean, because I didn't want to leave. I mean, I didn't want to leave. But you know, mm -hmm. I'm sure Kevin probably. He, he like, what did Cam say? I found out when y'all found out. <laughs> exactly. He was shocked too. So, yep. and I'm sure Kevin was shocked too. I found out. You know what I found out? Going to a Halloween party. Ah. <laughs> That's when I found. I was getting. Really? I was, I was dressed as Indian chief. In my kitchen, got a call from Ron Meyer, Big E. I'm like, Coach, yeah. And I was on my way out the door. And he said, We just made a trade for you. I said, Where are you at? <laughs> what you say? I'm an Indian man. That's how I found I got traded. Oh, you thought he was coming to the Rams? Come I, here. I didn't know. I didn't know what was going on. So you heard from Indy before you heard from the Rams? I heard. From, yes, I heard from Indy before I heard from the Rams. Wow. So like I said, a lot, of, a lot of these trades, man, you just like. Uh, did, okay. Did, did you go on to the party, or you? Just no, said no. I, I had to catch a red eye flight that night. It was a, it was a Friday night. I got there Saturday morning, and I had to play Sunday. I played Sunday. I played like eight, ten plays Sunday, Sunday. And then you and, cook, at the Jets. And when you played that Monday night against the Broncos, you cooked them on a Monday oh, night. I, oh, I cooked mm -hmm. them real. That was the next mm -hmm. year, boy. That, that, that was the next year you cooked them. Oh, I, 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 cooked I them remember that real. game. Yeah. I remember that one. Yeah. Well, Shannon tried to get even with the Broncos when he went to the Ravens. He caught one ball a game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I caught, I caught a tip deflection yeah. with 58 on. Yeah. I caught a tip. That's all the Hey, hey, no, no, the touch. Put it out of. Huh? Now ready to look at me. <laughs> you know what really made you smile was Ray Lewis. You know you should have had you should have had right? the sandals yeah. I got on right mm -hmm. now. You can rent Stop it, Skip. Well, seriously, <laughs> I had, you went to the greatest defense in history, arguably, except for maybe the eighty. They weren't that the year before. I'd had no idea. Oh, so that you made them great. <laughs> so 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 you said he just was a tag along. Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, he John, he John, right. well, John Elway drug you to a title. <laughs> Ray Lewis drug you to another. I'm like, well, hold on. I want somebody, I I play. somebody play. to drug me to one. <laughs> no, that. What part did I play in? <laughs> no mercy. We're joined by Nick Swisher. Welcome, Nick. Thank you. Obviously, you were in the clubhouse last night. Were you surprised mm. by the Astros' performance? No. You know, you know I, I feel like we're, we're taking the wrong narrative here. We're, like, I feel like some people are taking it. What did the Los Angeles not do? do, mm -hmm. what the Dodgers not do to win. It's what the Houston Astros did. They went and won this World Series straight up. They had to win a Game 7 in the ALCS. Then they had to win Game 7 on the road against the, the Mighty Blue, the Dodgers. Mm -hmm. For them to be in the position they are right now with as much devastation that has been done with Hurricane Harvey, this is one of those destiny moments. This is one of those feel-good stories. And rather than looking at what the Dodgers might not have done, we really need to, to understand that the Houston Astros are here to stay. This team is built for the future, mm. and it's about time that we give them the credit they deserve. Mm. By the way, you did point out yesterday, they just don't hit on the road in the postseason, and <laughs> guess what happened? <laughs> mm. you, you also pointed out a very interesting stat yesterday. You said that in Game 7s in the history of the World Series that the home teams were 19 and 19, right? Yep. That means that the pressure, as we all said, was on the home team, right? Yep. And the, you start grinding those bats and yeah. they start turning to sawdust because you're trying so hard to live up to all that emotion and noise. This is it, do or die, and you die. Ah. Right? Well, I mean, Shan, you guys know, you were in the stadium. Mm -hmm. when, the, when the Astros scored that run in the first inning, the air just Ooh, got taken exactly. right out yeah. of the building. Yep. And it was hard to come back. Right. So I feel like the Houston Astros, man, with this tremendous group of guys they have, the young core group that they have, uh, the veteran leaders, Justin Verlander, yeah. cemented his legacy for sure in winning that. And, and even on the other side for the Dodgers, I was happy Clayton came in last night, right. pitched great, mm -hmm. did a good job, kept yeah. his team in the game. Uh, you know, they just couldn't get the bats going. And what did teams say when they play a game seven on the road? What do they want to do? Start fast. Sure. Play fast. They started fast. Two nothing, five nothing, ball game. Ball game. And 
and that was the thing. And, and Joy and I, we were talking. I was like, Joy, if they can just get this run, they got a leadoff double in the bottom of the first. Yes. If they just get something on the board, they're like, okay, yeah, we, we answered. We answered. Mm. They had leadoff runners on each of the first three innings. Last three innings, they didn't get a hit. So you had your opportunities. Yep. So give 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 Houston credit. Yeah, there's no doubt. They yes, have got, you have runners in scoring positions, and they kept you from circling the bases. Okay, it wasn't what you didn't do. What about what they did do? Altuve is gonna, I believe, it will be the AL MVP. The dude hit 194 in the World Series, and they still won. Mm. Not very many teams. When you got an MVP player, and he plays as bad as he did for the most part. Now he had a couple of good games. That 13, 12 game, he was out of his mind. But normally, if you have an MVP player in any sport, Skip, and he doesn't play well in the biggest game, you're not winning. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. The reason why they did win, because they have multiple MVP guys. Yep. I mean, this team is stacked top to bottom. When your leadoff hitter is 6'4", 230, I mean, come on. Set the record for most homers hit in the World Series game. Good. Most total bases? I mean, come on. It's and look at him, and look what he did against the Yankees. Zilch. Nothing. Nothing. And then he comes back, he went, now nah, he, he know, he's going to be known forever. He's, I mean, he's the World, World Series, Series MVP. MVP man. I mean, I'm going to get that on my batting gloves. I'm going to put it on oh, my yeah, lapel. Yeah, okay, I'm okay. going to have it right down my shirts, oh, yeah. baby. You know it. Yeah. You, you did hit a World Series home run in oh, game man. three against Philly. Hey, you, you remember that at you, Philly? You, you swing hard. You never uh, know what could happen. J.A. Happ, you just <laughs> rocked him. Am I remember right? That? I know you this remember stuff. that? I know this That's stuff. That's my guy. You, Oh, you, you had a double in that game. Yes, sir. Serious. After I got benched. Do you remember oh, that? Oh, do a, I? Yeah, man. I, I needed that. Thank you. That's a good <laughs> I needed that one. <laughs> this man is still celebrating that moment. That was in 2009. Still. <laughs> that, wasn't, that wasn't that long ago. <laughs> so here's the one thing that mystifies me about the game of baseball. There is luck involved in hitting a baseball because it's so hard to do that you can't guide it. Maybe right. Tony Gwynn could say, I'm going to hit it between there and there. Few and Maybe, far but very, very few. Maybe right. Pete Rose could in his day. But last night was a classic, three classic examples of hitting the ball on the button right at somebody. Well, you just, it's, there's luck. Like maybe it's just not your night. So I give all the credit to Houston because they did what you thought they might not be able to do Correct. on the road. Yes, they sir. hit on the road yes. and they did it right out of the box because Springer leads off and just smokes it up into the. And, the and, and what Vince Carter do? It was over after yeah. that right here. It was over. Yep. Okay. And congratulations to the Houston but Astros, man. All of a sudden the Dodgers have three opportunities that they had cashed in on again and again and again throughout the postseason, if not throughout the year. And they get, but remember, bottom of the first, bases loaded. Jock Peterson, he smokes a ground ball as hard as you can hit a ground ball right at Altuve. What if he hits it up the middle or between the gap? One step know, to the like, left, one step to the right. What, and, and it just rolls up. He hit it so hard it could have gone up the gap, you know? Mm -hmm. And people are just parading around the bases, right? Because the bases are loaded. Then we got first and second. Bottom of the second. Oh, First yeah. and second. Yeah. And Chris Taylor hits a shot and Correa just hits it right to Correa and, yep. and they're doubled off. off. Yep. Okay, well, that's just bad luck. Like, it's not your night. Am I right? That's where analytics in the game of baseball, okay. that's where you got to throw them out. The you got to throw them out you because them you, out. Can't, you can't help that. So then it, it gets down to first and third. And I still thought there's a moment. This is bottom of the fifth. And Puig is up, and you said yesterday, Puig, you got to do something. Something. And I'm not saying that he, he hit this right on the button, but he hit it pretty hard right to the first base. You know, right. he just, it's just a line shot out and it happens so fast, it's like done, right. inning over. And you're like, God, what just happened? Well, the Dodgers didn't happen. That magic, whatever that Dodger blue magic was, yep. right. it just wasn't there last night. Yep. And again and again, I gave you three opportunities yep. where if the ball goes up the gap, you know Different things are happening. Game All six, remember pressure. game six, the ball went right over the first baseman head. It did. Landed that, right behind oh, him. Yeah, you, yeah, that little flare double yeah. down the line. So that's, that, that's just, that's pretty lucky, man. Yeah. Because that's a two-strike fight it off, right. up, you know, up yeah. high and tight, and you just kind of fight it off to right mm -hmm. field. Well, there's some luck. Like, it's your night or it's not your night. I tell and, you what. and it was a little bit – we were rooting for the Dodgers because we picked the Dodgers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did too, man. Okay, I once upon a time, I covered the Dodgers for the L.A. Times, so I got a little Dodger blue in me. I just thought it was going to be an interesting, you know, a great night for them and take nothing away from everything that happened in Houston. But it's been a long time there too. Yeah. Right? And there had never been a game seven in Dodger Stadium, so that felt pretty good to me. And then it was a little bit of a letdown. It was. Because they, they just yeah. kept – 
Uh, well, I think no. everybody was ready for the biggest yeah. party in the yeah, city right. to just absolutely explode or, or not being taken away. Or, or we were ready same. for eight to seven in 11 right. innings right. or something, you know, yeah. some, some big the, swing. All yeah. the games had been they so close so yep. and so yep. meaningful going yeah. into the ninth inning, and then this was so – basically after the third inning, it was yeah. over. It felt like the game was over. But I'm yeah. telling hey, – so after the game, you guys saw Carlos Correa gets engaged. Carlos Beltran, 20 years in the show, That's man. He finally won a World Series. The man, grown man was crying on a baseball yeah. field. Like, those are pretty emotional things. And, and I was fortunate and lucky enough to be there. So, yeah, right, man, now, I mean, right now, we're feeling pretty good got a about base our hit, game. You got a base hit in the game. Scored the winning run. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's still doing it. In my head, yeah, man. Yeah, in my yeah, head. Goggles. Are you thinking about making a comeback? No, sir, baby. Hey, this is all aesthetics right here. You really? Know? Okay. <laughs> That's all it's for. <laughs> I like you throwing a little Ric Flair in there at the That's end. right, baby. You know it. <laughs> no mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. Join us again same time tomorrow morning, 9.30 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports. One of one.